Hey there, my name is Lilith and I'm the creator behind fashion art label Ziegenthaler based in Melbourne and today I'm going to be talking to you about thrifting the perfect jacket to paint on. I've been painting on jackets for three years now so I feel like I do have a little bit of experience being able to spot perfect jackets to thrift on whether you know your design or not so I decided to make this video this can be for you if you want to paint a jacket yourself or it can also be if you're wanting to thrift a jacket to give to an artist such as myself or anyone else in your area to paint on so I'm just gonna go into a couple of details a couple of things that I try to look at when looking for the perfect jacket and I thought I'd share them with you first tip I'd like to share is don't take a jacket at face value. So this tip is a little bit about just having a different perspective on not necessarily buying jackets because they don't look good but more so buying them because they provide you with the perfect blank canvas. When you think about painting a canvas obviously a canvas is quite plain but it's the painting that gets put on it that makes it look good and so we need to come from that perspective when picking out a jacket because otherwise you will tend to narrow down a lot of your options if you just look at jackets for what they are rather than what they can provide you what you can actually turn them into a lot of the jackets that i've painted or i've chosen to paint have been thoroughly underwhelming garments but it's not about how the jacket looks, it's what the jacket can provide you. But you wanna look at sort of the architecture of the jacket. And we go into this later on in the video, stuff like seams, the quality of the fabric, the uh, fit of the jacket, just the things that we can't control as the artists or painters. So my second tip for you today is pay attention to seams. Whether you know your design or you don't, Paying attention to how the jacket is constructed is definitely going to influence your design. For instance, if you're a beginner, I know that there's um, a little bit of a trend with beginner painters where you will paint in between the panels of a jacket, whether that's the square panel at the back or a couple of the small panels on the front. Obviously, if you want to find a jacket to suit this design, you need to pay attention to the seams because not all jackets are created the same or equally. The more authentic and vintage a jacket is, the more obscure the seams are going to be. They have different seams, they've got different darts in different places, even just where the pockets are made. It's just good to know the nature of your jacket in that respect because it's just going to help you realise if you want to paint in the seams where you can, like what shapes do the seams create? Or if you want to paint out of the seams, just having a general idea of where you can place certain aspects of your design. Because if there's a, something of your design that you want to see, that you don't want to be obscured by a seam, you need to obviously make sure that you don't put it in a place where the seams are going to cut through it. So look at the seams. They may influence your design. Don't be completely deterred if they if the seams on your jacket don't really fit with your design concept because you can easily work around them but it's just something to keep in mind so i'm just here with a couple of examples if you're looking for a jacket with a traditional back panel obviously there are lots of jackets like that but some uh, differ in style and size as you can see here this panel is quite thin and short doesn't mean you have to confine yourself to the seams. You can paint over them, but it's just good to uh, familiarize yourself with the seams of your jacket. Even if you look at a jacket like this, as you can see, this jacket has a really big back panel and would be really good for painting on the back. I actually have plans to do that for this jacket, but also because this is actually a quite authentic vintage piece, there are also lots of different features on this. Seams that wouldn't usually be on a jacket, like even just these darts here, how low the pockets are, and even just not having that traditional sort of, those traditional panels at the front here. And if we look at a jacket like this, this jacket doesn't even have a square back panel. It's got this weird arrow thing. It's a quick silver jacket, but as you can see, it's quite, it's not constructed like other denim jackets you may find. Obviously this goes without saying, when you are thrifting a jacket, I'm sure you will try it on and you'll see that it fits you. But it's not so much about how the jacket fits you, but it's sort of how the fabric conforms to the shape of your body. Because obviously a jacket does take up the shape of the wearer and that can influence the design. You really want to make sure that you can pick something that's going to enhance your design more. So for instance, if you're looking for something 
If you're looking for a jacket to put really awesome, I don't know, you want like a snake going up both of the sleeves with like lots of intricate detail, you're not going to want to go for a jacket that is very baggy around the sleeves and tends to bunch up because all of that detail is just going to be lost. Maybe instead you'd want to go for a straight, uh, a straight fit jacket. Obviously the design will be curved a little, that would probably suit it, but you will also be able to see the details of the state much better with a sleeve that fits better rather than something that's like baggy, say like this. Um, and so there are, there are different sort of design concepts depending on where you put them, but just make sure that I guess where you want to put something, say you want to put something on the back, uh, just making sure that when you do wear the jacket it doesn't it's not going to obscure the place where you want to paint obviously it doesn't really matter like when it comes to the crux of it these are just tips for you to sort of enhance enhance your design and being able to pick the perfect jacket so for a jacket like this this is a straight tight women's jacket uh, because it is tight and it's not quite baggy, I did put a lot of detail on the sleeves, like this little dagger here. Um, this rope detail on this sleeve. And I even put a lot of, I put these two sparrows here on the front, just because the jacket fits me very well there and you'll be able to see them properly. If I was to replicate those same designs on that, on this um, denim patterned shirt, or even a jacket like this, just because of the way it sort of slumps and fits over the body, it's not going to showcase the design as well as if it was perfectly fit like this. So my next tip for you today is the quality of the fabric. Uh, obviously we all know what denim looks like, we all like to think that we can determine the difference between good quality denim and bad quality denim, but sometimes there are some fabrics out there that can really catfish you. And these are just a couple of things that I tend to look out for. So I mean obviously when you are painting a jacket you're wanting something nice and rugged, very authentic denim, you want a nice solid drill usually 100% cotton, but sometimes it can be hard to determine that depending on how you're shopping, whether that's in real life or online. And sometimes the appearance of the jacket can also, can also be a little bit confusing. For example, obviously this looks like denim. This is probably the most denim looking garment on this rack. And I did go for it when I first saw it at a store, but obviously, as you can see, it's very thin. It's it's very thin and very baggy. It didn't really suit what I was gonna paint at the time, but I just I decided to buy it anyways because it's just good to have some of these things lying around. So uh, yeah, sometimes fabric can be quite thin. Um, what I try to do is make sure that when I do go shopping, you, you just gotta, just make sure you just give the jacket a really good feel just to, or look at the tag, see if it's 100% cotton, cotton or if it's somewhere close to that, you're pretty good. Even with this jacket, obviously it doesn't look like denim, but it is 100% cotton and it's a drill. And I know that it will do the job whenever I decide to paint on it or whatever I decide to paint on it. So this is still denim. It's 100% cotton. This is actually vintage denim that's been bleached and colored. Doesn't look like it, but this jacket could work as well. Even just this lilac. As I said, doesn't look like denim, but will do the job and will still, still is pretty, it's a pretty heavy, sturdy drill. I think this can be a little bit hard when you're shopping online, like on Depop, or if you're just thrifting through online boutique stores, just make sure you ask the seller what the composition of the jacket is. And if that isn't 100% clear as well, you can also just see the way that the fabric falls on a person, like on the model, hopefully you'll be able to see a lot more rigid, sturdy denims tend to be a little bit more stiff. And then you've got a lot more lighter fabric denims like this, which will be a little bit more baggy and a little bit more flexible. You've just got to uh, trust your eye as well. And just something that you will know over time. And then my fifth, and final tip for you today, keep your mind open for how you can potentially alter your jacket. So say you found the perfect jacket, but there's just something on it that, you're, that you just wish wasn't there, like a stain, 
uh, a logo, it might be a blemish of some sort, a rip, anything like that, or just anything inconsistent to what you want in that jacket. Don't let this deter you from buying it because there are also different ways that you can alter a jacket to make sure that it looks the way that you want it to. Uh, you don't have to be a sewing whiz, this just more goes around like thrifting jackets. There are many ways that you can alter it just to make sure that it looks the way you want it to or to get rid of whatever blemish so for instance the way that i alter my jackets i've narrowed these down to four small things and that is cut cover rip and pick just as a small summary of each four of these uh cut obviously means what you can do with a pair of scissors so maybe it has a really good torso but you just don't like the way the sleeves are you can cut off the sleeves and make it a vest uh, if you don't like anything to do with maybe the hem on the jacket, you could possibly crop it to make it like a nice, that sort of trendy cropped denim jacket. Cover refers to uh, anything like stains. If there is a random stain on your jacket, you can, cover the, you can cover it up with fabric paint or use that surface area somehow in your design so a stain doesn't really matter. Otherwise, if there is a printed logo, you can also paint over that. Just make sure that the logo is flat and not shaped or curved because even if you paint over it, the shape will still be there. So just make sure it's flat. I've done it before. I've painted over logos and it's like it was never there. Rip refers to if you find a jacket and it just has a really random rip somewhere or it's been ripped at some point in its life and it just doesn't it just looks very out of place you can rip and distress it a little more or distress different parts of your jacket to sort of balance up the distressed aesthetic the fourth one is pick so picking off anything like you know like identifiable tags you can pick off embroidery you can pick off patches little tags just anything on the jacket that's been sewed on you can get a seam ripper and pick it off easily i pick off a lot of stuff on my jackets because i just like them to be a blank canvas with no identifying logo i found this jacket and it was awesome but it was a band jacket with a band flag um sewed on the back and it was just perfect in every other aspect but i just got a seam ripper picked it off and it was perfect there are probably a lot of other different ways you can alter a denim jacket don't feel like you are confined to doing just that that's just a couple of things that i've done in the past that's all i have for you today i hope this will help you on your journey to find the perfect jacket to paint on Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos on painting jackets and just thrifting and design in general. And I will hopefully see you in the next video.